It's, it's a strange day because obviously um, the confirmation has come through that the, the league's been cancelled um, and we're um, subsequently in, in the playoffs. Um, but in all honesty, we've known for a little while now. Um, the players have been back training since, since the start of June. Um, they've had a, an off-season programme which was tapered to a return to, to, to training at a training ground in at the start of June, so um, it, it's it's official. Um, but we've known for, for a number of weeks now in terms of what the the, the guidance was from the EFL um, and what the outcome was going to be, and it was always going to be playoffs for ourselves. Um, bitterly disappointed um, to miss out on a an opportunity of automatic promotion. Um, we've been in fantastic form this season um, and been in the top three for the majority of this season. So to, to fall out at the, in the last couple of weeks um, with regard to the, the points per game system they're going to use um, is, is disappointing. But we, we quickly have to get over that disappointment and, and concentrate on the playoffs. I mean, are you pleased that the decision's finally been made as well? I mean, it must have been a bit frustrating how long it had dragged on for as it, well. It's dragged on far too long. Um, I don't know. It's not easy circumstances. Um, I, we, we fully understand that. But um, it feels like we've been waiting on decisions to be made um, in relation to leagues, um, League One and, and the Championship as well. So I think League Two was, was set in their mindset of what they needed to do um, for the future of, of, of lower league football. Um, for the future of the majority of clubs in, in League Two. Um, the season had to be uh, fully cancelled. Um, and then you needed a, a way of getting the promotion and relegation off the back of that. So, um, look, like we, we can moan all day long about how long it's taken. Um, all we can do now is, like I said, is, I touched upon it, is just concentrate on the positive players being in a positive mindset. Um, they're training well at the moment. Um, we've got a really short turnaround because obviously the game is a week on Thursday in terms of the first leg. Um, but they've got to still look forward to it. Um, we've been involved in playoff campaigns in the past um, and they are always exciting. Um, it'll feel totally different with no fans there. Um, but we've still got to make it feel like a, an important period. Um, it's hugely important and the players want to have something to show from this season. I mean, we know we'll face Colchester as well in the playoffs. Two games against them this season, both very tough draws of two at their place and a nil-nil here. So it's not going to be an easy tie, is it? Oh, certainly not. Um, nothing between the teams, really. Um, I think we played them over the Christmas period and then early on in January. Um, both tight affairs. Um, two good teams. Um, two teams who, who develop the players and, and, and promote a lot of young players and, and generally sell sell players on to bigger and better things. So, um, a lot of admiration for, for Colchester. I've said that in the past. Um, but our focus is on ourselves. Um, we can only uh, control what we can control. Um, and that's how fit we are um, in a short space of time and how well prepared we are uh, and how we play on the day. Um, there will still be nerves, despite there being less exposure with, with the fans not being there. There will still be no, nerves. They're still high-pressured uh, environments. Um, our experience of, of playoffs in, in recent years, you've only got to look back at how the games have ebbed and flowed and, and one minute you're ahead and one minute you're behind and you, you're never fully through until you actually you actually qualify and you win the, the, the two fixtures or you, you, get, you, you get find a way of being successful. Um, and then if you get through those those playoffs and there's a final to, to come to as well. So um, I want my players to enjoy it. They deserve to enjoy it on the back of how they've performed this season. Um, and like I say, they seem to be in a good mindset at the moment. As you mentioned already, second week of training now. I mean, how have you adapted to the new ways of training? We've seen the marquee that's up at the Cliff Hill and, you know, yourself having and coaches having to wear masks. It must be a bit of a strange, surreal experience. It is strange, but you quickly you quickly adapt, quickly get used to it. Um, obviously, you mentioned the marquee there. So we're taking every precaution we can in terms of, of the way we work in the training ground. Um, the players have had to social distance. It was only up until the weekend. We were still training under the social distancing guidelines. So less than two weeks to prepare a team for a full contact and a full-blooded encounter in terms of a playoff fixture is, is certainly interesting. And we've had to cram as much in as we possibly can. So um, the main thing has been the welfare of the players, uh, making them feel comfortable. Uh, and then understanding what's needed to maintain a, a safe environment, and we, we feel we've done that. Um, obviously, the, the positive results haven't been um, haven't been kind to us, um, and hopefully, touch wood, we we don't get any more positive results off the back of the testing in the next ten days or so. So, uh, you got to play as you see it. We've got to be flexible. Um, but hopefully, that won't have too much of a bearing on on the squad. I mean, they came back into the hottest weather conditions possible last week. But I mean, it, it's been a bit cooler this week. So, has that helped? You know, to boost those fitness levels and that as well. Yeah, definitely. They've worked hard. They've been really honest in, in relation to their work. Um, the, the grounds are are firm. Um, so in terms of the, the lads' feet and then and blisters and bits and pieces, they've, they've certainly struggled. Um, also, they're on the back of, I think it's the best part of 12 weeks they, they hadn't trained for. Um, and when they did finish or when the season was suspended, um, the pitches was totally different. And it's, you know, it's a totally different time of time of season now. It's, it's the summer months when you're usually on holiday on a beach somewhere enjoying uh, with your feet up. 
Um, but the lads certainly have worked hard since they've been back. And, and like I say, we've got to treat the playoffs like they are. Um, games to enjoy, but games to show your value. Um, and a, a real stepping stone for some of our young players. And as you mentioned there, um, a couple uh, tested positive a couple of weeks ago and then we had one last week. I mean, as as a coach, is that quite a scary thought for you as well that, you know, this can happen? Yeah, it's always scary. I mean, the, the three people who've, who've tested positive have had no symptoms whatsoever. Um, and thankfully, no one close to them at the moment has caught the virus as well. So it's not been passed on. Um, so it's, it's strange because... You know, the first reaction is is one of shock, and obviously um, you are slightly scared. Um, but the longer you, you go with people staying symptom free, um, the more positive you are in relation to what what they can and can't do when they come back. Um, no one can be rushed back into our work environment, uh, and we certainly won't do that, regardless of the, the playoff games. Um, but players have also got to feel comfortable working alongside staff members or players who've contracted the virus. Um, it shows how strange it is because some of the people who've tested positive have been isolating and isolating for a long period of time now. Um, and it shows how easily it's, it's transmitted, whether it's from a, a supermarket or filling your car up at, at a petrol station. Um, it's incredible. So we, we can only guide the players and the staff as best we possibly can. Um, and certainly, um, not distractions, but positive results are, are certain areas you, you, you don't want to receive. Um, when you do receive the, the news, similar to what I said earlier, you've got to adapt. Uh, you've got to react in the right manner uh, and then and get on with what's next. And again, I guess with the matches being so close, you know, these results can affect your team selection, that can't they, coming up into the games? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I mean, I'm sure at the end of the playoffs, people will have a better understanding of, of what's gone on. Um, well, that's part and parcel of it. We're not the only ones. And um, there's another three teams in the playoffs at, at our level. Um, and I, I suspect there'll be a few more teams in the, in the playoffs in League One as well. So um, a lot of teams across the country are, are having to cope with these situations. Um, but we're, we're thankful that football's getting played again, um, despite it being behind closed doors. And, and obviously, you always want to perform in front of your fans. Um, the main thing in the first protocol is to get football back played again. Uh, and then we've got to assess once this season's finished, how we're going to go about next season. So um, deal with what's in front of you. And that's certainly what we're doing at the moment. And then I'm sure there'll be a lot more decisions in the future. Have you been uh, keeping an eye on how the Bundesliga has been reacting to the change as well? Obviously, playing in front of no fans. Yeah, to a certain extent. Um, you know, we've, we've been focusing on, on what we've been doing as much as anything. Um, and the Bundesliga top level might look slightly different mm. to a, a, a League Two playoff. Um, but in terms of the, the the way the game feels and the lack of atmosphere and what you can hear and the way the, the subs are, are warming up in, in within social distancing guidelines and bits and pieces. It's, it's, it's certainly strange to watch and it will be strange to be a part of. Um, we've had a couple of practice matches already um, and we're, we're trying to conduct ourselves in the same manner that we will come near the 18th of June. So we, we're preparing ourselves the best we can. Um, all we can remember is that it's still a game of football, regardless of what's going on externally. It's still a game of football. Um, it will be our best 11 or hopefully our best 11 versus Colchester's best 11 uh, and we'll see who comes out on top of that. And how is the squad looking in terms of fitness? Obviously towards, well, when the season was uh, postponed, you had the likes of Johnny and Jack who were, you know, pushing to re make a return. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's, it's not been as easy as we expected. Um, there's been complications, I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but in terms of fit and able bodies, we feel we've got enough. Um, we, 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 we've never got the right amount and as a manager you always want that every single member of your squad fully fit um, and in relation to, to obviously Jack Sparks um, there's not been complications with Andrews but that was a serious injury um, his season was basically over when he injured that, 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 that knee on I think it was Boxing Day um, and it's great he's back training but we can't rush him as well he's got a huge future in the game um, and a huge career ahead of him um, and we certainly won't put that at risk so he, he's training well at the moment um, like I say there's a few side issues with, with players' feet um, and bits and pieces and the general aches and pains you get in the first probably week of pre-season. Um, but we're, we're in that first week of pre-season, but then we've got a game the following week as well. So we're, we're trying to get the right balance. Um, but like I say, I hope to have as many players as possible available for next week. Um, and just how big a factor do you think fitness is going to be going into these games? Well, I think it'll be huge. Um, we, we've said all along to our players that if it's going to be the playoffs that we come back to, we, we've got to be the fittest team within that playoff um, protocol. I'm sure the other three managers will be saying the same same thing. Um, but we feel we've 
we've been as professional as we can be in terms of the, the off-season program. I say off-season, what they were doing in the lead up to you know the middle of May and the end of May, um, and they were working hard on their own. And then when we got them together, we worked them as hard as we possibly could. Like I say, the last few days um, and certainly the rest of this week will be more game-based activities, um, where we're trying to replicate what we'll face against Colchester, and then it will be the normal we lead up to a. A normal fixture. It's not a normal fixture because it's a playoff and, and the circumstances and the situation is totally different. But we have to treat it like that. The players have to feel relaxed to, to a certain extent, uh, knowing that they're, they're in their normal routine of a, the, the match day uh, environment. Um, but it will be different. We understand that. Um, like we, I keep on touching on it. We, we've got to make them feel comfortable. Um, and they are playoffs at, at, at times where you need to enjoy your football, but you, you enjoy it a lot more if you're successful. It's quite a unique situation as well in terms of the games are going to come quite close to the you know the sort of end of June contract um, ending for certain players and things. Does that add an extra stress to this kind of situation? Um, possibly. Um, the, the, the players out of contract, the ones who've returned to training, have been fantastic in terms of attitude. Um, they, they know the situation from ourselves as a club as it stands. Um, but what happens in the next couple of weeks could easily have a bearing on what's, what happens in the future. Um, promotion strengthens everyone's hand. You perform well on, 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 on live on Sky or on, on national television, you've got a better chance of a contract either at our club or, or elsewhere. So um, they, they know what's at stake. Um, but their main focus is, is, is finishing off this season in a positive manner. Um, they put so much hard work into it um, and put us in a great position to, to challenge. Um, obviously, that was taken away from us. So now we've got a challenge through a, a different avenue um, and we're, we're certainly going to attack it. And just finally, a bit on the fans as well. Um, it was announced a couple of weeks ago that we'd received over £16,000 in um, unwanted re refunds for season tickets and uh, Plymouth Argyle tickets. And now we're planning on uh, offering the opportunity to have a couple cut out of yourself in the stage which Adam stands for stand, I guess. Just shows how special the fans are and also how great it would be if you know the players can come out on that second leg and see some, some familiar faces, albeit in cardboard form. Yeah, definitely. It underlines what our club's all about and um, the generosity of the fans it, it's not matched anywhere else in, in, in the whole world let alone lower leagues football in England um, it's absolutely incredible and, and gestures like that go, go a long way and um, we know what we're, we're we're in the middle of in terms of the pandemic and the financial restraints that's going to have on the club in the future um, and we want to play in front of our fans um, we're, we're as disappointed as we are to miss out on the, the, the league campaign finishing in the correct manner um, you want to play the, the big games in front of your fans. Um, we want to be successful for ourselves, but also the, the fans as well. So um, it, it's going to be strange. Um, I, I advise them best we possibly can to, to act in the right manner and watch the games at home on, on the iPlayer or on Sky TV. Um, keep doing what they need to do in terms of the safety and the, the guidelines from the government because um, we're, we're far from through this, this pandemic. And I think people have seen the numbers in the southwest are, are worrying at, at, at the moment. Um, so behaving in the right manner is absolutely key, but the generosity people have shown is is incredible, um, and and the finances do help the club. Uh, we all know what we're going to approach. Um, certainly at the end of this season, a lot of difficult decisions are going to have to be made, uh, and any financial benefit that that people can provide um, is going to be huge for this football club. So it shows what we are as a football club, um, but it's something our, our fans have done time and time again, and I'm sure they'll they'll do it in the future. Thanks for your time, Matt. No problem. Mate.